Swayam Prabha. Digital India. Educated India. Welcome back to Aircraft Structures 1. Uh, this is Professor Anup Ghosh from Aerospace Engineering Department, IIT Kharagpur. We are uh, in the lectures of uh, sixth week or module 6. In that sequence, uh, this is lecture number 31st. And uh, in this uh, already uh, we have covered to some extent uh, how the problems to be formulated. Uh, those uh, uh, from the unknowns, 15 unknowns and 15 equations already we have come, up, come across. So, using those uh, how to how to solve problem uh, that is the um, predominant uh, approach and importance in this lecture. We will start with uh, there are uh, basically two types of approach in that also in solution method also. So, in that solution method we will see uh, we will learn one process in this uh, lecture series and the other process we will learn in the uh, next lecture. So, uh, with this uh, introduction uh, we let us start, but before we start anything uh, I prefer always to come back to the recapitulation slide. Recapitulation slide uh, really helps us to learn what we have done so far. Uh, we have covered history, brief history of uh, aircraft, development of aircraft from Wright brothers uh, and then uh, to the present days the huge uh, AN 225 or A380 or uh, and also we have uh, learned, uh, learned the aerospace structural analysis or solid mechanics from the uh, starting point, how physicists approached the problem, how the first experiment or documented experiment done by Leonardo da Vinci. All those things we have learned, we have also said that uh, in the recent years, few years back also, there are uh, good famous theories by uh, Quieter Sanders with respect to the shells. Shells uh, are, are very good uh, or applicable uh, structure for aero industry, aerospace structures, always things are carved in mo most of the cases. So, from there we went to the various types of external uh, loads encountered by an aircraft and then uh, we have come across to the conceptual detail of those, uh, those structures, aircraft structures. Those conceptual details to some extent we have seen with different diagrams, uh, internals of ribs, frames, uh, all those things, uh, spar we have seen how do they look like, then uh, what are the load type uh, may be encountered while it is on ground or it is airborne, uh, why what is the concept of light envelope, how the inertia rho plays a huge role in case of aircraft structure, how the load factor uh, takes care of that and fix a regime of design for different type of aircrafts. From there, we have seen uh, how different parts of aircraft like wing, landing gear, uh, tail plane, tail assembly uh, experience different type of loads, uh, fuselage experiences different type of uh, load. Uh, and from there, uh, also we have learned with typical example of uh, shear force bending moment diagram of whole aircraft, we have uh, considered in two part one uh, the wing as separately uh, how the bending moment shear force is coming on it considering unit load method and then uh, 
we have seen for fuselage also then uh, three dimensional structures are important in our uh, aircraft industry. It is not only used in landing gear it, that is also used in, in different other parts of the structure also like the tail boom or the internal fuselage uh, construction if we look at. Uh, it may be analyzed uh, as considering a plane frame, but uh, it, it is uh, probably better with the uh, invention of modern tools may be considered as three dimensional one. With modern tools all uh, structures are nowadays done with as three dimensional structure and it is analyzed unless it is uh, very very computationally expensive or it requires huge resource. So, from there uh, uh, introduction of loads and other things we have uh, gone to the deflection how energy methods help us to find out deflection. Deflections uh, are interesting because uh, in any structure especially in aircraft structures deflections are interesting because uh, deflection governs uh, many things, many thing in the sense one good example is that uh, as we have discussed earlier also then again to there is no harm in discussing again while, while uh, at, at, at the position of takeoff uh, say it is uh, taxing. In that case, uh, the aircraft wing is loaded with uh, fuel. The maximum amount of fuel in general uh, whatever is possible is stored inside and because of that it bends down. Uh, how much the tip bends down, how much the engine comes close to the ground that becomes important. So, we need to find out deflection. Not only that, because of that uh, the aerodynamics also changes, uh, because of that uh, say uh, the deflection of wing uh, changes and if the if deflection of wing changes it also changes the lift. If you go into more deep uh, the aeroelastic phenomena that this I have not talked out about earlier that also changes because inertia is changing, deflection pattern is changing many way it changes in that way. Okay. Up to that we have uh, talked about more more on aircraft structures, but after that uh, what we have started is that a theory of elasticity part which is the basic of uh, solid mechanics structural analysis uh, whatever the way we think that way. And uh, the we, we, we have learned and redefined we must say we have learned how the stress is defined and from there we have found out equations of equilibrium, we have found out principal stresses, shear stresses, strain displacement relations, compatibility equations have redefined strain and then uh, we have come across about 15 unknowns what we were talking about few minutes back and with that concept let us try to see how do we solve problems. So, in this uh, we will be mainly concentrating on the inverse uh, method of solution and uh, let us see how do we do that. But before that uh, some part uh, was, uh, was truncated in the last lecture. We have uh, done in the last lecture the compatibility equation in terms of stress uh, for solution what we generally satisfy to solve problem instead of uh, satisfying the uh, displacements uh, in terms of uh, strain we generally try to do in terms of strain and that is the approach we try to do because stress it is easier. So, in that context we have already learned uh, that for uh, plane stress condition how the compatibility equations in terms of stress gets modified. So, we have um, so, grad square sigma x plus uh, sigma y and uh, the right hand side x and y are the, um, the surface forces uh, acting for unit area and this is minus 1, 1 plus nu. But same, same way this is for plane stress condition that means, what we have done is that sigma z z tau 
in this case all these are equals to 0. So, considering that we have got this equation. Now, if we try to find out similar one uh, while we do for the go for the plane strain. So, let us see how do we do in plane strain already it is it is described many times that it is described many times that it is similar to the stress, but only the third direction component of strain is restrained it is considered as 0. So, uh, compatibility condition uh, we need to satisfy in terms of stress that is the reason compatibility is written first at the beginning. Now, what we can do the previous method if you not all the steps are repeated here, but it is easy you can easily do it. These strain components are put considering these values for the strain expressions are put back to this equation. So, we, we get uh, the uh, equations in terms of stress. Once we get the equations in terms of stress, then a little bit modification of the equilibrium equation with respect to the surface forces uh, we can easily do and we can find out uh, the equation what is listed here as the plane strain condition. So, I repeat what is done this F sub z uh, is equals to 0 F sub x F sub uh, x x F sub y y and F sub z z all these terms are put back in these equations and then then uh, what do we do is uh, we do a little bit modification of the equation and go for to and we find out the uh, equations for compatibility in terms of stress in planes in in plane strain condition. One point you must note that uh, here that the left hand side this is uh, same even this part is also same only this constant is changing. So, with that note let us uh, move forward. So, uh, we here it comes the stress function concept uh, as we have uh, already introduced that uh, instead of compatibility in terms of displacement or strain we are coming to the stress function or con in terms of stress we will try to solve in terms of stress. So, in that process what we will do this function uh, facilitates the solution of elasticity problem what the function is, how the function is, uh, what are the things to satisfy that let us see. So, in that case uh, for a 2D problem stresses are related to single function of x y such that substitution of these stresses in terms of this function automatically satisfy the equation of equilibrium no matter what form of function may take. However, an appropriate stress function must satisfy the 2D equations of compatibility plus appropriate boundary condition. So, this has to be done and if we have uh, seen that instead of the boundary uh, instead of the uh, forces surface forces capital X and capital Y the compatibility equations in terms of stress uh, what we have seen reduces to this or we can say that the compatibility condition in terms of stress is this one. And we also have in a, for a 2D case equilibrium equations without a body force is this uh, when we do not have any force like that. So, considering that uh, what we can go forward that. Uh, here comes uh, whatever conditions we have said here about the function that function is denoted by phi. We say that uh, we need to define such a way that uh, that sigma x uh, here again a small mistake is there typographical mistake definitely this is equals to 
sigma xx equals to del 2 phi del y square sigma y y or sigma y is equals to del 2 phi del x square and tau x y is equals to del 2 phi del x del y. So, if we if we see uh, we, we, we also define or bring one more uh, person's name famous physicist name that is Eri. Uh, Eri's stress function phi is known as where phi is Eri's stress function substituting in 1 in this satisfies the equilibrium equation. So, this can directly be substituted here and this we say that this takes the form of biharmonic equation grad 4 phi is equals to 0. So, uh, if, if this set is satisfied we say that the equilibrium condition is satisfied. So, with this this note and concept of phi we need to consider a phi uh, I should not say imagine we need to consider we need to need to find out a function phi which represents the stress for a particular problem. And in that particular problem the stresses components in two dimensional is sigma x x is this sigma y y is this and tau x y is this. So, with that concept uh, let us move forward uh, to solve problems. Here comes uh, the two ways of solving problem inverse and semi inverse method as it is mentioned we will first learn the inverse method and in the next lecture we will go through the semi inverse method. So, uh, to go through the methods in brief uh, the task of finding a stress function satisfying the above condition is quite difficult. As just now I was uh, telling you I was hesitating to define. So, you just may think of how difficult it is to find out to formulate the phi. So, that it represents a particular uh, stressed body with its uh, stresses. So, it is really difficult it needs lot of experience it needs uh, maybe while they did all these things probably they did uh, a lot of experiments. And then from the experiments they, they try to do all these things to find out the stresses. So, with this note let us go forward an alternate approach is known as the inverse method. Here we specify a form of phi satisfying equation 3. What is equation 3? This is equation 3. Okay. So, that is the equilibrium equation to satisfy it and then what we can do is that assume an arbitrary boundary and then determine the loading condition which fits the assumed stress function and choose boundary. So, this is the reason it is said inverse. So, we are finding out the first stresses and boundaries conditions and then we are put saying that it is applicable for this type of case. Usually phi is expressed as polynomial that is the good way of doing it because uh, the nature if you look at of grad 4 phi uh, it is better to follow a polynomial. You may use other things uh, whatever the experience you have you may try and share with us. So, first uh, let us consider as an example 1 in the inverse method let us consider that phi is equals to a x square plus b x y plus c y square. So, where a b and c are constant it satisfies grad 4 phi. So, that means the fourth derivative of uh, x if we consider this is definitely goes to 0 that is y definitely will go partial derivative we will see and uh, the second uh, two 
consecutive second partial derivative the second term if we talk about that if we consider for this that also is 0 here also it, it becomes 0 here also it becomes 0 and the third one which is third part of the grad 4 that is the partial derivative with respect to y in 4, four order that also makes it 0. So, it is satisfied once it is satisfied the stresses are stresses are listed here it is double derivative. So, we have 2 c it is also double derivative with respect to x we have 2 a and this tau minus del 2 phi del x del y that leads to minus b. Now, let us try to see it, let us try to draw what is the condition we are getting if we if we represent all this in this particular element sigma x is 2 c on this this side as well as it is 2 c in this side and acting uniformly in the element in the x direction y is also 2 a acting in the y direction sigma y y and we have a shear stress where it is of minus b that is the reason the sign is shown in the opposite direction. And uh, with this notation, uh, we, we say that it represents a good plane stress condition. And this plane stress conditions we may use uh, for uh, solution of uh, any problem. The derived stress conditions are shown below representing the state of stress described by the assumption of stress function. So, this is what this assumption describes this problem. So, this is inverse method. Let us see one or two more problems in the inverse approach. So, in this approach what we see is, is that uh, example 2 we again assume one polynomial. In this case the polynomial what we have assumed is, is a x cube by 6 b x square y by 2 c x y square by 2 and d y cube by 6. So, uh, this also satisfies this bi harmonic equation or grad for phi is equals to 0 that you, you can easily um, check uh, I would suggest you check I have not worked out these things here. Uh, verbally I have described in the last, but uh, it is um, you may do uh, you may try this. Okay. So, so, similar following the similar approach since uh, this is the first part of assumption we can find out the stresses. What do we have in the stresses that the sigma x is equals to c x plus d y c x plus d y right and uh, the sigma y is a similar function is a very very um, symmetric one. So, definitely it is a x plus b y the sigma y and tau x y what do we have we have as minus b x minus c y. Now, uh, this gives us uh, a, 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 a certain type of stress conditions, but uh, probably that uh, does not uh, represent a problem what we are looking for. So, uh, let us see. So, let us see uh, if we consider uh, these constants a, b, c, d in, 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 in such a manner or that it represents some practical problem. So, the first case uh, we will see that is the problem uh, where we are assuming here a, b, c are completely arbitrary and a variety of loading conditions are possible on a rectangular plate. If we assume a b c is equals to 0 that means, uh, a b c is equals to 0 what is happening sigma x is equals to only d y sigma y is becoming 0 oh here it is written sigma x is equals to d y sigma y is equals to 0 and tau x y is also equals to 0. So, what do we get? We get a stress condition something like this d is varying if this is the element we are talking about half above half below 
in that case what is happening with respect to d since it is changing it is representing a stress here is it is tension and in this part it is compression where do we get this type of uh, problem this this type of stresses uh, we get it in in pure bending pure bending means there is no no, no change of bending in along the length of the structure as well as there is no shear force is acting so that is the reason it is it is to some extent concluded and we will be using this letter this understanding will use later that d y cube by 6 d y cube by 6 this term uh, of this inverse approach uh, shows it is it, it, this inverse approach solves or shows the bending problem. Now, uh, with this approach uh, we will see this bending is as I told you uh, this is one good example uh, probably for uh, pure bending a cantilever beam. and at t there is a load p if this length is l the projection length then this beam is actually under p l moment and that moment is a pure bending because there is no shear force acting in the transverse direction of the beam so the beam uh, load in the beam is pure bending and uh, that that stress distribution in this is the only normal stress and there is axial one more addition is there p uh, we can easily have that that is not represented here but uh, it is similar to that there must be some additional load of the p so to nullify that we can easily put one more load here as P, then that axial load is also missing, but there is a bending moment. So, with this condition we can have a pure bending, but the next uh, portion with uh, assumption of uh, other variables let us see how does it represent. So, while we assume that A C D are equals to 0, what do we have? We have sigma x is equals to 0, sigma y is equals to B y and tau x y is equals to minus b y and that particular stress condition is shown here. In this stress condition if you look at uh, the sigma y is b y at any distance b this this am amplitude if we talk about this is how much then if this is b that means capital B multiplied by small b by 2. So, this is what and the other way th this side it is minus but uh, please note that the tau is having varying with x and uh, here also along this boundary it is varying in here there is no no stress uh, acting in this boundary so in this boundary x is value is 0 and sigma y is not having a, any component of x so that's the reason you please note that the shear stress is varying this way here similarly it is varying this way here since it is like this. So, the shear stress varies like that and it is constant here at this end. So, with representation of A C and D equals to 0 considering the inverse approach considering the uh, stress functions area stress function as shown as the polynomial we can have this type of problem. And with this introduction uh, to the inverse method, uh, we will consider the semi inverse method in our next lecture. So, uh, we have come 
to the end of this lecture. The standard uh, reference is uh, shown here. So, you please uh, try to follow in case of problem or if you have more uh, query about those. So, the inverse method ha we have learned and uh, in that consequence uh, I would like to thank you for attending this lecture and we will move forward to learn the next lecture. Thank you.